Hello and welcome to Fataris' Kitchen. I'm your host, Chef Fataris. It's time once again for Shoot'em Up Saturday. And on the menu this Saturday, we have Ghost Pilots, a 1991 Neo Geo Shoot'em Up now available as an arcade archive title. What kind of taste will it have? Let's get cooking and find out. So we have the usual Arcade Archive Neo Geo treatment here. There's both the Japanese and the English versions, as well as the usual high score and caravan modes. I've covered those in past videos, so if you're interested, you can check some of my other Arcade Archive videos to go and see exactly what those are about. Once you start the game itself, you have the controls, and then we fire up the arcade machine. Neo Geo Max 330 Mega Pro Gear Spec SNK so, Ghost Pilots released in 1991 for the MVS, the arcade version hardware of the Neo Geo. But even finding information on this title is relatively difficult online, there just doesn't seem to be a whole lot there. And after putting a lot of time into it, that would be my my opinion is it's just a forgettable shoot 'em up. That said, let's take a look at what we have here. So you do have the ability to play one player or two player. Once we start the game itself, we're given a quick how to play, and then we get to select our bombs. There are four total bomb types that we'll have throughout the course of the game. For our purposes today, though, we'll be using the flash bomb, as it's the one that I've come to like the best. And I'll go over why in just a moment. So one thing that is interesting about Ghost Pilot is we're not going and flying a standard fighter of some sort. We're actually flying a modified seaplane that's been prepped to fight. So we do have rapid fire available to us thanks to the emulation on the arcade archives, which is nice. Though button mashing to get decent shot speed isn't too hard in this title. So right off the bat you see that it's a relatively straightforward vertical scrolling shoot em up. We have red planes, like where have you seen that before, that if you destroy the entire group will drop power ups. There are three power ups total that you can get from the planes. S, which increases our shots, uh, it's actually possible to upgrade to level 7, but unfortunately, if you die, you're reset all the way back to level 1, so that's very unlikely to happen. Bs will increase our bomb. Uh, not sure if there's an actual upper limit to the capacity, as the bombs are quite useful, so they do get used quite frequently. Then there are also 1-ups that will occasionally drop from the red planes as well. Certain enemies, when they're destroyed, will leave stars that will count for point bonuses at the end of the stage. So let's go and talk a little bit about the bombs. So we're equipped with a flash bomb right now. When we use the flash bomb, we'll have a little circular ring of explosion that surrounds our plane. One thing that's really neat, and a, a particular part of the flash bomb that I like, is after it's exploded, you can actually move that ring in certain directions, thus going and throwing the explosion. There are four, or rather three, other bomb types that we can talk about real quick. There's the dynamic bomb. The dynamic bomb is your basic bomb that just, well, has a big explosion. It shakes the screen and it even slows down your motion a little bit. So that itself, I'm not too keen on. Then, the game does have a point at which you get to select a branching path. And in those branching paths, each one has its own bomb type associated with it. The first type is the napalm bomb, where you're dropping these napalm. Napalm themselves are effective against the ground enemies, as it will leave a trail of burning napalm on the ground, and any enemies that happen to move or fly into it, as well as bullets, will be annihilated. So that uh, can be a little bit useful, but in practice it just doesn't work as well as uh, it sounds like it would. And last we have the support bomb. The support bomb is interesting. When you activate the bomb, there are two allied planes that come in and drop these four bombs on the screen. Those four bombs will explode once enemies get within close proximity of them, so it does have the best coverage of any bomb, but the slow pacing of its use makes it uh, one that's a lot trickier to use. And unfortunately, those last two bombs, the napalm bomb and the support bomb, are only available in the stages 
uh, or rather those particular branching paths that you can select them in. Returning back to where we're at, we find ourselves at the boss of stage one. So the bosses are kind of a fun batch in this game, I feel. So you've got both ground-based and air-based bosses. And the ground-based ones, I think, are the funner ones to fight. Let's see if I can use, effectively use my bomb here. So if we set it off and then move forward, we can send it flying forward. It will both deal damage to the boss as well as block shots. And bam! boss of the first part of stage one down we move on to the second part of stage one and that's kind of the whole point of this game is you're being attacked from two sides one from the air then one from the land and air uh, the way that the instruction manual for this title presents it you're being attacked by D country which is the one that's both ground and air and I country which is the one that's just air so it does change some of the perspective so when we're fighting the ground and air battles we're much closer to the ground and we can see that represented by just how large the tanks are versus when we're fighting the air battles we're significantly higher above all the tanks and everything that we happen to go and see below us the stage doesn't represent it too well at the beginning but towards the end of the stage you will see some tanks in the underneath in the ground itself that better indicates that. And that's basically what we have here with Ghost Pilots. So as far as what it's similar to, obviously it's taking a lot of nods from 1940 series from Capcom. But that said, there are some things that this title, like, uh, it just can't quite live up to that. It doesn't have all the various special weapons, the stages are overly long, and I have to admit, for being a Neo Geo title that came out in 91, it just has a really bland color palette. So let's go ahead and start talking about the minus and the plus flavors then. So minus flavors, one of the, my biggest complaints about it is it just feels like our seaplane just moves too slow. There are times when part of that is due to the overly uh, large like scrolling size of the screen where it just helps give the feeling that we're just moving slower even than we really are but there are a lot of times where I'm trying to catch up with power-ups or trying to dodge out of the way of bullets and it's just not easy to do because the plane itself moves too slowly the difficulty of the game is also quite high it would be possible to get to the point where you can do a relatively good run but even as is I have the game set to its most easy settings and it took nearly two full continues with a hundred lives apiece for me to actually get to the end of the game which brings me to my next minus flavor this game is overly long sometimes I've complained about shoot ups being too short but between the two if you're talking about one that's too short but still really interesting or one that's too long and dull I would take the one that's too short definitely and the color palette like I said just isn't very good you've got some blues occasionally mixed in there but for the most part it's a drab brown and uh, green and those colors can be vibrant but in this case they're just not so here's where we select which uh, stage we want to go against the D army or the I army the D is easier as the tanks and the ground enemies actually present less challenge. So here we can select our napalm, we can stick with the flash bomb, or to do the dynamic. I'll continue sticking with the flash bomb while I finish things up. Plus flavors, I do really like the sprite work on the planes in particular. I just wish that there were a little greater variety in the enemies we face. As especially if you're doing the air stages, you've got all these enemies that start out as smaller sprites below you or come in above you or are diving around so you see the underbellies of the planes as they're doing maneuvers. It's really neat. So I do really appreciate the sprite work. And the boss fights themselves are interesting. There's a little bit of a fun strategy and design to the ground-based enemies, the flying enemies. It's like pity that it takes so long to get to the boss fights as is as I feel like those are the highlights of this particular title and there we have it ghost pilots served up for your enjoyment 
So as far as Neo Geo Arcade Archive titles are concerned, this is definitely one of the ones that would be most passable in my mind. There are definitely better shoot 'em ups that are available to play. And its biggest problem is it's just dull. It's a very staple type vertical scrolling shoot 'em up, so if you want a food analogy, it's like that generic brand of bread that is just kind of stale compared to the more standard brand that you can buy. Well, that'll just about wrap it up for this week's episode of Shoot'em Up Saturday. As always, I want to thank you so much for coming out and joining me, and I look forward to seeing you again next week. <laughs>